everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Bisexual Bachelorette Australia. She's getting better and better. It just takes practice. Australia? Okay, it's not good and I know it's not good, but we don't have to talk about it every time. We are on episode 10, meaning that we only have, I think, three left, including this one. We're doing hometowns. We're down to final, what, five? Like, it's getting serious with Brooke, our bisexual babe. And I have finally, no joke, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, <laughs> figured out a way to watch this season without needing to use all of those sketchy, like, third-party websites. I've just turned on my Surfshark VPN and told it to put me in New Zealand, because you can watch this for free online in New Zealand. So, thank you, Surfshark, because last episode we were having some technical difficulties. And I don't know why I didn't think about using Surfshark then, but I smartened up. Okay, is there anything else I need to say up top? Oh, hi. My name's Elena Joy, for any of you who don't recognize me. I make videos on this channel mostly about the queer community, sex, dating, relationships, but sometimes we watch the Bi Bachelorette together as a family and it's so cozy and relaxing and nice. These are some of my nicest videos. We sit down and, and I get to share my love of reality TV with all of you. And it's gay, so like, could this get any better? Last time, where we left off, Connie Boy was not impressing Brooke because as much as we love Connie Boy, he's a bit of a dreamer. Head is a bit in the clouds. Also, I think Millie, Millie and someone else, I think one of the boys, Millie and one of the boys went home, which, I mean, we're a little bit sad about Millie, but overall, we've still got Holly, we've still got Carter Couch Boy. Conrad Couch Boy? Carter Couch Boy rolls off the tongue, so we're sticking with that. And somehow we still have Jamie Lee. It's a mystery to us all, but you know, those are the three we're interested in. Darvid? <laughs> Darvid who? <gasps> Connie. Today, Brooke's meeting my family. Unfortunately, I can't get to Melbourne at the moment, so we'll be doing a video. Oh, before. Conrad. Conrad Couch Boy. That's what I said, right? I am so curious what Connie's family is gonna be like? Like what combination of parents has to come together to make such a perfect specimen? It doesn't have like this really strict direction in his life and I need a bit of stability and a bit of security within yep, that a partner the partner because I didn't have a lot of stability growing up. I get excited every time I see her. She's, she's definitely a presence. You know, at this point- She's definitely a presence? Are you joking? That's the nicest compliment I've ever heard. Connie, if Brooke doesn't marry you, I will. <laughs> oh, and she's standing. As I mentioned earlier, a big thank you to Surfshark for partnering with me on this video. Using a VPN like Surfshark, a virtual private network, not only keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of your information, but it swaps your location, like your actual real current location with any location of your choice, it gives you a new IP address. It's like you're traveling virtually around the globe anywhere that you want to. So for example, if you wanna watch The Bisexual Bachelorette Australia, you just change your VPN to say that you're in New Zealand and you can watch it for free online like you're in New Zealand. This works with streaming services like Netflix or Crave if you're not in Canada. In Canada, we have a streaming service called Crave that has like every HBO show ever, but you can only access it if you're in Canada or if you have Surfshark. And it's not only handy for if you're at home and you wanna change your location to watch something that's only available somewhere else, but say you're traveling and you wanna continue watching something that you've been watching at home, but it's not available wherever you are now, you change your location. Back back to your home country and voila, your favorite shows are available again. While at the same time encrypting your data and masking your IP address so that your location and personal information, your browsing history aren't linked to your identity. And of course, I have a deal for all of you. If you use my code Elena, you can get an extra three entire months for free. It's linked in my description. It's seriously game changing and I highly recommend you check it out. Thank you, Surfshark. They've seen me go through heartbreak, so they're very protective of me. Okay. <laughs> well, I just got As they should be. Did you? We're all protective I, of you. I'd be really interested to see who has made him the way that he is. Exactly. Let me take the chair, my dear. <laughs> oh, look at the them. Chair, Sit down. Look at the dad. I'm going to just fix my hair. 
in the reflection. <laughs> it's fine, Dad. Oh my god. Okay, the brother. The brother's voice is Connie's voice. Just close your eyes and listen when the brother speaks. That is Conrad. And the dad pulling out the mom's chair and then fixing his hair. Oh my god, I love him. Oh my god, I love him. Hey! It was all wrong! <laughs> I'm a man! Charles! It's been forever. Dude! If we can get my glasses back. <laughs> oh, look, I'll leave it. Forget the glasses. I'll focus. <laughs> okay. Dad, I'm this obsessed is with this man! Say what? Dad! <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you guys. I might excuse myself, Brooke, and uh, leave you with mum and dad. Oh, All he's right? just All leaving right. her. Be leaving yeah, her alone. Oh my gosh, Conrad's family. What are they going to ask her? Absolutely hilarious. They're open, there's no filter, and you can understand why in a split second, why Conrad is the way that he is. Now that he's left the room, can I ask you some questions about him and your feelings towards him? Yeah, go for it. Do you see oh. your- Oh, he asked for consent about the questions. He was like, is it okay if I ask you some questions about your feelings for my son? And she's like, yeah. This is the opposite of like the shotgun dad. You know, like the dad that's like, I want to be waiting out on the porch with my shotgun for anyone who comes to try to date my son. <laughs> Are there shotgun dads? For sons? I hope so. That's what we're fighting for. Equality. He was in a quite a long relationship and he has been um, hurt. It hurt him horribly. <laughs> oh, Dad. Seriously, he, he chucked his whole heart and soul into it. And sorry. And I felt so sorry for him. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, gee. Kooky and stupid, his father is. <laughs> Kooky and stupid, no! No! Genuine and open. Wow, that brought a tear to my eye. It absolutely does weigh heavily on me because I don't want to hurt him. I'm, um, yeah. Uh, I feel like it's hard. It's really hard. Wow. Now you just hope that she feels good about the kind of intensity from the parents. Because I feel like if, if you're with somebody and you feel intensely toward them and you, you feel like, well, no, I'm not gonna hurt him, then hearing how badly somebody was hurt or how much their family cares for them and how vulnerable it is for them to come into a new relationship wouldn't feel necessarily scary. Whereas if she's kind of on the fence about him, that level of intensity might push her away. So I wonder, I wonder how Brooke's feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had a really fun uh, day, like, okay. I you did too. Yeah. They look good together because they're both attractive people. Who wouldn't look good with Connie? They don't match in some way. The puzzle pieces aren't necessarily fitting. <laughs> does she feel the same? But does she feel the same? Oh my God, I love when they kiss. <laughs> Yes, this is the most vulnerable I've felt. I can't have a problem. Process. Why does that have such an effect on me? In this year's like bathtub Q&A video, somebody asked me if I still ever question my sexuality. And I basically was like, no, not since realizing I was gay, not since coming out as gay. I have not questioned it. Until this moment. <laughs> I need to finish this season so I can look this man up on Instagram. A lot is weighing heavily on my heart and in my head. And the pressure is kind of getting to me. Yep, this is what I'm saying. The pressure of the family is pushing her away because she's already feeling on the fence. Jamie Lee is next. So today you'll be meeting two of my closest friends, Dee yeah. and Monique. Who do you think is gonna be the one that <laughs> I need to impress? Um, okay, I, I feel like Brooke is more herself with Jamie Lee than with Connie, which is, I hate it. <laughs> Even the way she's looking at Jamie Lee, she's got the hand on the leg. It feels more natural in some way, but maybe that's just because they're friends and I'm getting like the friend vibe. I'm also kind of getting the vibe that Brooke would top the shit out of Jamie Lee. <laughs> and that that's Brooke being herself. <laughs> I am a little bit nervous about how Dee's going to grill Brooke. Yeah, and how is Brooke gonna handle the grilling 
when Brooke is just like, hey, Jamie Lee, let's be BFFs forever. BFF roommates. So how does it work? Are you guys? Because guys... <laughs> So how does it work? Like, lesbian sex. <laughs> I wish. I wish she would ask that question. We need to hear Brooke explain queer sex to a straight woman. We need it. It's quite concerning to me to hear the fact that Brooke is dating two other guys and another girl aside from Jamie Lee. Well, so I want to yeah, find out whether Brooke's feelings for Jamie Lee Kind of the point of the Brooke show. Feeling. Jamie Lee did say that Dee was going to hit me with a hard question. And I do only see Jamie Lee as a friend. What makes Jamie Lee different? Um, she's very communicative and mm. she's very sentimental. Mm and she puts in a lot of effort to show that she cares for me. I'm sorry, Brooke, I'm sorry. That was kind of a boy answer. It was a bit of a cop-out. If you ask Brooke what makes, what's special about Jamie Lee, and Brooke says, well, what's special about Jamie Lee is that she really likes me. Red flag. What's special about Jamie Lee is that she really makes me feel safe. Red flag. Like those are fine things. Those are fine things to have as compliments and like positives about your partner. But also like, what do you like about them as an individual? Like, what can you say about Jamie Lee as Jamie Lee, as a person, as, as a separate entity out in the world? What do you love about Jamie Lee? I don't know that Brooke could list anything or she probably would have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Jamie Lee. Girl, you're gonna get hurt. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling upset <laughs> because I feel like this means that David's hometown is gonna be great. But maybe also Holly's is gonna be great. So we'll see. Let's have Holly next, please. Something that we can really cheer for and feel good about. Today is David's hometown. David, I, I feel safe. Barf, she loves him. Barf, why? Stop it. She looks stunning. She always does, but today especially. Like, look at her little laugh. She's got a smile in her eyes with David. Mm, he's gonna win. The main question I'd like to ask her today is whether she'd be prepared to move to Brisbane, which is where Dav is um, living. We do Dav? actually live in the same street at the moment. And Roya lives in the next suburb. Okay, so we've got a close-knit family. They live on the same block. How will that work? We haven't got to that that stage of that discussion just yet. Yeah. Okay, mom's intense. She's not like, how do you feel about my son? How do you see your relationship progressing? Please don't hurt him. She's like, when are you moving in? The, the house next door actually just came up for sale and I haven't seen your down payment yet. I'm currently building a spare room onto the back of my house. When are you moving in? We hope that Brooke will be seeing you again soon. We really hope so. Very formal, mom. I love it. This is yeah. interesting. It's almost like in the first two, she seems to have less of a connection uh, to the person that she's dating, but the family and friends seemed lovely. Whereas this seems to be that she has like, she clearly has a thing for David, but his mom was super intense. That would be an intimidating family to enter. That like the first time you meet the mom, she's like, when are you moving into the block? That's pressure in a different way. I feel so lucky that I did get a chance to meet them because I can understand why they're so protective and care for you so much. I'm so submissive of you. Like I'm, no, I'm serious. I think you'll- See Man. Oh. Okay, listen, I was planning to pretty much skip the David hometown, but like there's a lot to say. When he compliments her and says he's smitten, she's smiley, she's giggly. She wasn't like that with the first two. And even like her talking with him now after the hometown, she has said more words to David than she said to Connie and Jamie Lee combined. It's not looking good, folks. We've still got Holly. We've still got the Holly hometown. We've got hope for the Holly hometown. Shoot, we also kind of know that it doesn't work with Holly because we kind of know that Holly dates Millie. And we also kind of know that Holly and Millie are now broken up. Life is ever evolving. Hello. Let's judge the oh, hello beautiful. kiss. How Let's are see you? I'm good. if how there are even you? is one. Oh, I like look how cute she is with her little collar and little sweater. Oh my God. I feel like both of us together 
it would be a very strong and very beautiful relationship. So I really hope today okay. that I can make as good Oh, look at that smile. Oh, my God. Who am I meeting today? She just smiled at Holly with hard eyes. So she she stole a glance. She is, like, the most important person. We haven't life. seen Brooke she's very steal a glance. thoughtful and she's Yet. a very good reader of people. Oh, and I think Holly said she's never brought somebody home to mom before. So this is, this is a big deal. <gasps> I'm excited oh for this. Okay. <laughs> oh, you go. Hi, Hello. Hi, it's good to meet you. Oh, nice good to meet you. I'm a little bit scared. Meeting Brooke today is very significant because Holly hasn't brought home a female partner for any of us to meet yet. So it's a bit of an anomaly for us to number one to be meeting Brooke as a female partner and number two in this sort of pressure cooker situation. Okay. We see where Holly gets her emotional intelligence from. And it must be hard if you're over here and your family are in WA. Yeah, I think we haven't really touched on that holes, have we? Like, mm. I do see myself always, like, going back home and, like, being on country and settling down. But that could be another, like, 10, 15 years. So Brooke is saying that she probably wants to move back home, which she hasn't really talked about with any of them. Gonna be a problem for David and his mom, let me tell you that. Didn't mention that one to mommy David, did you? Brooke and I have not spoken about the fact that she would like to move back to WA to start I, Yeah, I don't think she's spoken to anybody no, about that. I don't that. feel like the WA move was something she was hiding from me. I think that we just haven't had the chance to talk that far in the future. I don't know if I'm willing to move across the country. How are they putting this all on Holly and Holly's family, but nobody seems concerned that David's mom wants her to move into their basement? Foster? Um... I guess that's concerning because I do know that Holly has always voiced that she would have ideally no children or maybe one. I want a whole tribe. Oh boy. Mama Holly is asking the deep questions. To hear that Holly doesn't really want any children, I feel completely and utterly blindsided. Oh my. It's almost like the two people that she seems the most connected to, there's logistical errors, <laughs> like logistical things that don't match up. And then the two that seem like they're more flexible logistically, she is less excited about romantically. Oh, what's she gonna do? I need to have a chat with Holly because there have been things that have come up today about her that are totally the opposite of what I thought. I want a small family. Okay. Yeah. Like, I just think, yeah. Small I, family, um, but what does that mean? If there's anything that you need to ask as well, don't be afraid to like But what ask. does a small family mean? Yeah, I think the mean? biggest thing for me on, Holly, today was I didn't know that you'd be wanting to move back to WA. In my head, you know, I've been to Melbourne, I know the city, I can see myself there, mm. but I'm not sure if I can see myself in WA. Two big bombshells in one hometown. Kids and like where you want to live are two pretty obvious non-negotiables to talk about. We can't see ya. Like I don't, don't oh, know where I'm standing right now and I'm like, this is one of my strongest connections. This is one of my like connections that have been from the top. Oh man. Oh, she looks so little. You just want to give her a hug. Wow. Getting emotional. Getting real. <laughs> oh, Brooke. Wow. That shows that it's been Holly from the start. Oh my goodness. We're at the rose ceremony. What do we, okay, what do we think is gonna happen? If she sends Holly home without saying to David, hey, in 10 or 15 years, I want to move away from your family's block. I swear to God. She seems medium on how she's feeling Conrad, but logistically impossible with Holly. It's gotta be Jamie Lee, right? Brooke has only three roses to Yeah, no shit. I'm sorry, but tonight one of you will leave the Yes, match. duh, we know. Thank you. Who's it gonna be? Jamie Lee, it's gotta be Jamie Lee, right? She, she clearly has stuff. such a strong connection to Holly. She's I'll not sending her home. She's not sending her home over like some really well, logistics. Look at her in that red suit. Some... First rose. David. David. Yeah. We knew that was coming. Who are they gonna leave it between? The most dramatic thing to do would be to give it to Jamie Lee, 
and leave it between Connie and Holly. Jamie Lee. Yeah, okay. Okay, Jamie Lee. Oh, well, sh <laughs> These are our two favorites. Ah, I'm stressed. Oh, she said no, she can't send Connie home. She can't, she is. She's gonna send Connie home. But that's probably better because like break his heart now rather than later. Holly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Connie. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. Oh, this is making me actually sad. Oh, Conrad, call me. I'm gonna go follow you on Instagram, like, right now. Hit me up in those DMs. <laughs> oh, and he winks at her and looks sad. Oh my god, I'm in love with this man. No, this hurts. This one hurts me. How is Jamie Lee still there? I don't get it. I'm gonna f we're finding him. We're gonna find him on Instagram. Why am I getting deja vu? Have we done this already? Connie or wait, I have to have it. I have to do his actual name or I'm not gonna be able to find him, obviously. I wanna type in Conrad Carter Couchboy. That's not gonna show anything. Oh my god, there he is. Oh, he's got a girlfriend. Okay, he's got a freaking adorable girlfriend. He looks happy. Guys, our Connie boy looks happy, okay? Our boy's doing good. I'm gonna put Conrad's Instagram in the description. Let's all go give him a follow, okay? He deserves it. He, like, <laughs> obsessed. I'm obsessed with this man. Wow, final three. Final three in the next episode. Another huge thank you to Surfshark for not only sponsoring this video, but for allowing me to watch the episode in a half cohesive way. Remember, you can use the link in my description and use code Elena to get an extra three months for free as a part of your Surfshark subscription. An extra big thank you to my VIP patrons, my vitally important producers. You all make my world go round. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already because that's where the magic happens and you're already gonna be over there following Conrad. So like, may as well follow me while you've got the page open. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Brooke just wearing and the bi uniform, double bi uniform. We've got high-waisted shorts and a crop top, and we've got long sleeve shirt with overalls. <laughs> this is the most bi woman I've ever seen in my life.